engine performance, propeller curve, and turbocharger matching part one. MIP versus MEP. In today's video, I'm going to discuss mean indicated pressure and mean effective pressure, indicated power and effective power. Using the plan equation, how can we calculate the indicated power as well as effective power? And I'll be showing you how to calculate the area using planimeter and then how to calculate the power. So let's move ahead with the discussion. The engine power can be divided into two groups. We can say indicated power as well as effective power. Indicated power is the power which involves in the combustion chamber. So from the fuel energy which is converted into mechanical energy using pressure and volume expansion. The effective power which you can derive or take as the output of the engine crankshaft or at the flywheel. Always the indicated pressure is greater than the effective power because when we come to the crankshaft there will be frictional losses in moving or running gears. The indicated power can be calculated using the parameter we call mean indicated pressure or MIP. For effective power or else we can call it as brake power that which is available at the flywheel can be calculated using mean effective pressure or MEP and it is after considering the frictional losses in the running gears. Let's see what is power. Power is the rate at which work is done. If you draw a curve between pressure and volume in a particular cylinder, then if you consider the average pressure, the area under this curve, we call it the work done. So if you divided that work from the time, then you can obtain the power. So let's see how can you draw this PV diagram and calculate this area then to obtain the power. Power is equal to plan. E means a pressure, MIP or MEP, depending on the power that you have to calculate. And L is the stroke length. A is the piston area. N is number of power strokes per second. For four stroke engine, this value you have to divide it by two because every two cycle or uh, two, two cycles that you will get one power strokes. For two stroke engine, you can use same RPM value because in two stroke engine, you will get a power stroke in each cycle. This L is the stroke length, which means the piston distance from TDC to BDC. To calculate indicated power, in place of the pressure, you have to insert the value of mean indicated pressure. Let's see how to calculate this mean indicated pressure. And if you want to calculate effective power, then in place of P, you have to insert the value mean effective pressure. Mean effective pressure is a value which is less than mean indicated pressure. And once you obtain the mean indicated pressure, you can minus the friction loss constant K1, which is mentioned in your user manual. Normally, for man BMW engine, regardless of the engine size, this value is 1. The K1 is equal to 1, which means if your mean indicated pressure value is, let's say, 5 bar, you have to minus 1 bar, then your MEP value will be 4 bar. So then to obtain the effective power, you have to insert this obtained mean effective pressure. Let's see how to take power cut. There is an instrument for this purpose. It consists of a rotating drum. The drum can be rotated by a cord. If you pull 
the uh, cord, the drums will start to rotate. And if you release, it will again restrain back. And there is a stylus which moves up and down according to the pressure applied from this point. And this instrument you have to connect to indicator cock in the main engine. And once you open the indicator cock, as the pressure varies inside the combustion chamber, the stylus moves up and down. And if you press the stylus against the drum, and if you insert a paper around the drum, and this kind of drawing that it will produce. To have this drawing, we call it as the power card or banana curve because its shape is like a banana. This is the curve that we are going to use to calculate MIP or this is the PV diagram. So you have to calculate the area of this diagram. But to obtain this, you have to connect the cord into the indicator drive, which has a push-pull rod and indicator cam. As the indicator cam rotates, the push-pull rod moves up and down, then the drum rotates. And as the pressure varies, the stylus moves up and down. This two motion combination in combination will produce this curve. Let's see actual arrangement of the indicator drive. This is the indicator cock, which is mounted on the cylinder head. And the indicator drive is adjacent to your exhaust actuator. The indicator cam is inside the camshaft. Fuel pump cam and the exhaust valve cam. And the next one is the indicator cam. Using the indicator instrument that you can obtain two cards. The first one is power card which is the PV diagram and the area of this diagram gives you the work done. The next one we call draw card diagram or out of phase diagram. It like a mountain, you have two peak pressures. The first peak one is, we call is maximum compression pressure. The second one is the maximum cylinder pressure or P max. And this diagram can be used to monitor the combustion condition. Let's say, for example, if it is early combustion, you, it, the diagram will be in this light color. If it is late combustion, it follows the green color pattern and the normal curve, which is in red. And if there is any dribbling or any other abnormality in the injector, also can be revealed using the draw cards. If we see overlay for PV diagram or the power diagram, bottom center is here. And as the piston moves up, the compression takes place. And as the P compression comes or maximum uh, pressure comes from the compression, then as the ignition comes, the P max comes and the expansion takes place. As the exhaust valve opens, the pressure falls down. So this is from BDC to TDC. From the out of phase diagram, the BDC is here and the compression comes here, the P max comes here. So this is P comp and this is P max. For out of phase diagram, you don't want to connect the, the diagram, uh, di the drum to the indicator drive. But for PV diagram, you have to connect the drum to indicator drive. To take the draw card, the skilled person is required, he has to pull the cord as to be synchronized with the piston motion with out of phase. For the purpose of calculating mean indicator pressure, we had to calculate the area of the PV diagram. There is a special tool we call planimeter for that purpose. You can use another technique we call Simpson's rule to calculate the area. So the device of this planimeter, it has a fixed point and a vernier scale and a lens with a tracing center. You have to keep the diagram which is obtained from the indicator instrument and you have to mark the starting point and using the tracing center, first of all, you have to re, uh, set the vernier scale to zero and start to move the trace center around the diagram back to the starting point and then you can read the corresponding area of that particular diagram.
here I will show you how to obtain the area of a diagram. First mark the starting point on the diagram and place the center point on the starting point and make the vernier scale zero. There are two readings, one for vernier scale and another one is for the counter, same like a dial indicator. So once both are zero, then you can start drag the lens or the center along the curve in one direction. Now you have to take it along the curve and make one complete movement. Come back to starting point and stop. Then you can read the vernier scale. It will show you the area in the vernier scale. For this particular example, it is 2.8 square centimeter. To calculate the mean indicated pressure, let's say this is the power diagram that you have obtained. So to take the average pressure, you need first to calculate average height. Actually, this diagram represents the stylus motion in millimeter in this y-axis. And this is the TDC to BDC, this drum rotation. So the drum rotation in this axis, the stylus motion in the vertical axis, which represents the volume to pressure variation in your combustion or the piston movement. And if you take the area, and you can divide it by it by the length diagram length then you will get the diagram height so if you divide the a by l then you will get this kind of shape this is the average area or this is the area and it will give you average height of the stylus movement of the stylus and then if you take this mean height we call it as mean height that is the diagram area divided by the, the diagram length and to calculate or convert it into mean indicated pressure this stylus motion or the average motion you have to multiply by the spring constant the spring constant is the value of that spring that we have used there will be several springs provided in the instrument and there will be a chart so you have to choose the correct spring constant for the particular spring then once you multiply the mean height by spring constant you will get your mean indicated pressure in bar to calculate mean effective pressure you have to reduce one bar of friction loss or the k1 constant from the mean indicated pressure which we have obtained previously to calculate the power there is equation given in your user manual which is indicated power is equal to mean indicated pressure into rpm into k2 constant this is the one that you can find in your manual in man bmw engines but actually this consists of the plan the power is plan for to calculate the indicated pressure power you have to insert the obtain mean indicated pressure value here. If you want to calculate effective power, you have to use MEP value instead of MIP. And in this simple formula, which is given in the manual, it consists of a K2 constant. This constant is different from engine to engine, depending on the engine bore and engine stroke. And the manual, they are providing a table giving K2 value. There will be two K2 values provided for a single engine. One is to obtain the indicated power or the effective power in kilowatts. The other one is to obtain it in horsepowers. If you closely see, this is very simple because mean indicated pressure, you can calculate it from the uh, diagram. RPM is the RPM where that you are going to take your uh, performance and the K2 is the value 
which is given in the manual and this will give you a power in a single cylinder and to obtain the total power of the engine you have to calculate individual uh, power of the engines and you have to take the summation this k2 value is the value which is given in the manual as i mentioned so if you see that is the unit conversion and the area of the piston and the stroke length of that particular engine unit so this has been given in the manual to make your calculation easy so then you have to just calculate the mip and take the rpm and obtain the k2 from the table right this is about how to calculate integrated power and effective power in your engine on next video i'll be discussing the electronic power calculation method because this is the most uh, recent development that this conventional power taking method is now uh, obsolete so in next video i'll be showing you how to calculate power in electronic as well as we can use uh, engine provided nomogram curves to uh, get the power so be with me in touch so in next video i'll come back with the electronic power calculation and nomogram power calculations thank you